I was once a camper myself. But it wasn't anything like this. Cheap creep. Hey, hello and good afternoon. We got on this episode of Jeep Creep, even though it's chilly outside, we're going to be working on heat and uh, all that good stuff. But let's check out our front door first. So in the last video, you didn't really get to see it, but I only have the top half of the door and then this bottom uh, footstep thing, which I don't have a lock for yet. Well, this pops down. I got this clipped, so let me unclip it. Well, it's not easy. And then, yay, there's my door. Okay. So, I got uh, my diesel heater in today. So today, I want to remove all this cabinetry and um, this furnace. I'm going to take good care of it as I take it out because I will be probably trying to sell it um, or maybe reuse it. I don't know yet, but let's get started. First thing, this is some lovely decorative metal paneling. Yeah, pretty cool. Got a nice wood grain on there. It's neat, don't get me wrong. This cover just slides right off, right there. And uh, for those who are curious, this is a Hydro Flame Corporation Salt Lake City. This is the manufacturer. Where is manufactured? I don't see a make. There it says Terra Lab Engineering. I know Atwood and a couple other people made these. Hmm. All right. I'll get a flathead and grab them staples. All right. There's the staple that was in there. Eh, yeah, good little bugger. Another reason why I'm doing this too, the floor, it's just gross. So uh, I want to put something nicer in there. Um, the old linoleum, it's stuck pretty good to the wood and it's pretty much waterproofed it. That's probably one of the reasons why the floor still works in here. So uh, I'm thinking maybe I'll get uh, some plastic sheet, uh, like vinyl or whatever that they sell at Home Depot and put that down so I have a nice floor in here and also will waterproof it much like my vinyl did in a thousand years if this thing ever dies again and the roof fails and it doesn't really matter um yeah so all right let's try to get this out okay so it looks like all that's holding that in are four really long wood screws 
and a piece of little piece of one and a half by one and a half wood. And I'm not sure how that's mounted to the outside. We'll have to look at that too. But uh, let's, let's take a look really quick. All right, this is the outside where the the propane vents and uh, looks like just a couple screws. Let's see if I can get those out. All right, so I took the screws off and there's like a couple tabs right there. And then this just push, pulls out. It's got a long tube on it like that. Um, yeah, let's see how we get the rest out. So the outside's disconnected. And uh, looks like this thing just comes loose. Let me get my glove on here. Okay. Okay, that's it. Um, interesting things. Uh, let's see, we got a, a bubble wand that was jammed in there. That's pretty cool. Also, we got, uh, you know, what I was afraid of, hornet's nest. It uh, seemed to build up. Ugh, gross. Let me get you in there. Right there, in that hole there. Uh, pretty nasty. And on this side is that pipe right there. It goes down in there, and that had stuff growing in there. So, uh, pretty gross. So, if you got one of these things, man, I'd be uh, making sure that's cleaned out, eh? Alright, uh, the rest of that looks like it just pushes out. So. All right, beautiful. Now we got a nice big hole in the side of the trailer we can uh, do some cool stuff with. And uh, looking in here, I mean, look at that. There's no insulation back in there. You got a big, huge cavity of nothing. So, uh, yeah, later on when I feel up to it, I definitely want to spray that in with uh, uh, great stuff foam. Uh, you know, get some more R value in this bad boy. All right, so uh, on this particular camper, this is your uh, propane lines hard lined out to the tank. It's got a, a three-way valve. This one that I cut off uh, went to the stove, so I'm going to have to get a new stove on. And now i got a wrench on there, and I'm just disconnecting the, uh, the furnace here uh, from the propane line. So i still got a good, uh, good piece of hose. Um, let's try to get all that wire in one piece, the thermostat and all. Okay, the thermostat's over here. It is a hydroflame thermostat. And uh, the way it was installed just had a bunch of duct tape over a couple uh, screws that had little rubber caps. Uh, and yeah, it's, I guess it's on there pretty good. Yeah, let me unscrew that. Pretty simple two-wire thermostat. I'm going to disconnect those two wires and then pull the, the slack. I'm trying to keep all the wire together. So under the bed on the inside is our electrical center power converter. It's a Series 6400A, and it uh, looks like... This converts uh, AC to DC. I'll have to do a little research, but uh, I'm gonna take this panel off to disconnect the furnace. Yeah, this thing uh, scares me a little bit. So I'm I'm gonna pull this out and not use this. I was gonna try to reuse it. I don't trust it. I want to use a modern inverter. Plus, if I do a solar array and all that, this ain't gonna do that. I don't think. So I'm just gonna go ahead and disconnect everything and get this guy pulled out of here. So that's what the back panel looks like. And you can see just how much space is in there. Um, I'm gonna put a fuel can in there with a, a door on the front for my diesel heater. Um, and then I don't know what I'm gonna do over here yet, but uh, I'll probably work on it. This paneling is just like, you know, real thin veneer. And it's got little pieces of styrofoam glued to it. And that's how it kind of held up in place. It's kind of crazy, but uh, 
Yeah, let's get this fitted. Awesome. All I gotta do now is put that door in there. Okay, there's the outside. And this is what I'm installing right here. This is just a, an RV door. It's got a key lock, which is nice, uh, opens up. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's for all kinds of things for RVs, like hose, hose materials, uh, reels, and water lines, electrical hookups, all that. These are like 10 bucks on Amazon. I figure if I center it, the hole, I'm gonna really put it a little forward so I get the cap. Let's get a marker and mark this. Big hole for my jig. See? So that's pretty cool. Is that how that's gonna work? Yeah. Let's turn that all flat. That's a good job for the Dremel. I'm getting this cut. It feels soft. I hope it's not that brittle. Okay. So you can see that did a pretty good job. Look at that. Pretty smooth. All the plastic just rubbed right off. Good. Okay, let's see if that works. Look at that. Man, no camera secrets there. That just worked. How crazy is that? I'm real for my hand. Your uh, nozzle in there. Look, 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 look. Got a little bit of a sight line. Tap her off. Good to go. Alright, ran to the store. Got me some really small stainless uh, bolts and uh, nuts. I also went and bought me a uh, diesel, five gallon diesel tank there. Filled it up with diesel. Um, five buck or five gallons, and it was twenty dollars. Not too bad, I guess. Found that at uh, Family Farm and Home. All right, uh, let's get this thing mounted. Get that out of the way. All right, I know most people use uh, butyl tape, but I'm using this because this is what I could find, and I've used this before. This weather strip and caulking cord. Uh, it's pretty neat stuff. If you guys have never seen this before, it. Uh, it comes in a roll like this, and it's kind of like uh, kind of like plate, like a clay, I guess. It's bendable, 
So the cool thing is, is I, I can um, rip it off any size cord that I want. Um, so let's get some cord to fit around this. So let's see. Uh, three lines works pretty good. Let's see, how many are there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Let's do four. We'll split it right down the middle. Yeah, it'll work. All right. I think I can tear this, too. Let's see. I'll take it to the end here. A little bit sticky, it's not super sticky. So it's uh I like to work with this stuff, it's fun. Rips off like a twizzler or uh is that a twizzler? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, they wrap those. And you just kind of form it around the thing here. Now, should I use butyl tape? Well yeah, I guess, you know. It's what people use. I'm sure I'll hear about it, like, oh this stuff, not for outdoor. Blah, blah, blah. I don't really care. All it's got to do is hold somewhat of a seal. I'm going to silicone around it anyway. So, you know. If you want to rip on me in the comments, you know, go for it. It's cool. If you want to educate me on why this was a terrible idea, yeah, that's cool too. I don't, I don't care. I like to... Believe it or not, I do take people's uh, um, feedback to heart. So, you know, it's all good. All right, so there's two down. Let's see, the length's about yay long. From yay to yay. Just like Play-Doh or clay, just form it. It's kind of nice. And uh, when I lock those um, bolts down, it really doesn't matter. I mean, this was done in seconds. It's clean. I would I would recommend doing this. I mean, if down the road, like everything goes kitty wampus. This was a terrible idea. I'll let you guys know, okay? And there we go. Look at that, see? All sealed up. Easy peasy. All right, so let's get that in. Like so. And hopefully, my bad drilling, I can get wrapped up. Now look, I got a ton of this stuff left. You can use it for all kinds of stuff. Yeah, let's see. Window screens, doors, window and through wall, air conditioners, garage doors, autos, metal buildings, baseboards, boats, concrete walls, downspouts, gutters, siding, flashing, expansion joints, conduit and pipes. Um, won't harden or crack. Use indoors or out. Self-adhering. I mean, I don't know why you wouldn't want to use this stuff. I know people like butyl tape, but I like this stuff. Here's the fuel tank, and uh, you'll notice it's got a couple of flat, thicker spots that are square right here, and right here for two different orientations. Um, we're going to have it in this orientation, so I'm going to drill a 1964 um, uh, hole and try to keep it off the seam, uh, and that's enough for the uh, 
the nozzle to thread with. Just like so. And there's a bunch of yuck inside of it, which sucks. But let's see here. Maybe I can get a pick and get that off. It's tough. All right, put it up and sit. I got it where you can thread it in, see? Uh, it goes the other way, but that's the gist of it. Okay, here's the fuel tank. And the easiest way to do this, you need to get this plug, this nipple sticking out of that hole. Um, they give you an O-ring they put on each side. So I got an O-ring on there. This is the intake side on the inside of the tank. So you can just get a piece of copper wire like I did, bunch it up at the end so it holds it, and then kind of weed it and pull it through. So let me do that really quick because I only got one hand here. I wish I could have filmed that because that literally took me two seconds. Now, um, what you do from here is just start threading this hole as best you can without breaking it. All right, so I hand threaded it on and it came out good. It actually um, fits perfect. It actually threads into the plastic, so you got an extra sealing. There is the, um, the inside sitting on the uh, O-ring. Then on this side, all you got to do is pop on the other O-ring and tighten down the nut, and then you're all set. So there we go. We got our, uh, our nice uh, valve hooked up to the hose right there. Boom, boom. Now I need to figure out where to put this on the floor and then drill a hole through the floor. All right, so underneath the camper here, we can see our fuel line. And uh, yeah, I don't have to drill anything. I am going to foam this in so it's not totally exposed um, later on when it warms up. And uh, it's kind of funny that that separated a little bit. That's how that fit. And it probably wouldn't have fit over here or over there because that's all together still. But whatever. Um, it's better than having to cut the frame up, which I'm not going to do to make this convenient. So cool, huh? All right, so let's get the, I'm going to run the, the fuel pump like way out in the front, away from the camper so I don't hear it. All right, so we got our, our fuel line coming out the bottom here. And um, I want to go over some important tips real quick. So number one, make sure that your fuel pump is mounted lower than your fuel tank, which is right here. Um, reason for that, uh, basically you don't want to have... Uh, you know, work against gravity. It just makes more sense to have the uh, the fuel drop down into it, even though it's pumping. Um, yeah. All right, number two tip. I drew some arrows. So you can see this is the direction of the fuel. And if you look inside here, um, the fuel goes inside the chamber and then in the basket and then out, okay? This is going towards the, um, the heater. So make sure that you have it in this direction. Also, make sure the fuel filter is before the fuel pump. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that set up. Now technically I probably shouldn't have this line exposed because of road hazards and blah, blah, blah. I might put in some hard conduit later on. I'm gonna put the fuel pump on the outside as well because these things tick, you know, tick, 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 tick constantly. And I'm thinking if I put it on this hard frame, which already had a bolt right here, um, it will hopefully deaden the sound. So I'm going to put my fuel filter kind of right here. And for me, it's kind of a convenience because I can visually inspect it and uh, make sure everything's copacetic. Also, don't try to use different line. Use what it's supplied with. I have the soft nylon line, which I've read uh, people complain about because the pump um, is putting pressure on the line. And since this is kind of soft, that it flexes and it makes it harder for it to pump. Um, yeah, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna get too crazy and worry about it for right now. 
But if you're looking to be optimal, there's a clear hard line that you could use. See, there was my fuel pump or my fuel filter. All right. Um, now I got to run the line to my fuel pump. I think what I'm going to do later on is uh, I'm probably going to put a box on this on the front, like a cargo box, and I'll have most of the stuff uh, covered up and protected that way because you really don't want this stuff out in the open. This is almost for demonstration purposes. All right, so you can see where I'm putting this thing. There was a hole right there, so I'm bolting it to it. And you'll notice, too, my pump. A uh, good way to know which direction the pump is, this electric box goes towards, this is the side of the heater, okay? So the, the fuel direction is going this way. Now, very important, make sure that this pump is between a 15 degree and a 30 degree angle facing upwards towards the heater. Now, the reason for this is uh, this pump is a piston pump going back and forth, all right? And when it does that, uh, it's creating air bubbles. And these air bubbles, if it's going in the direction where it's at, the air bubbles can run up and escape, allowing fuel to continually to run. So it's very important that you do that. You might get air messages and you might kill your pump. Another good idea too, fill your lines, pre-prime it with diesel first, because this pump, um, relies on the oil that's in diesel. Diesel's very oily and it lubricates this pump. So pri uh, priming it just means getting, you know, uh, fuel in the line so it immediately hits it and it's immediately lubricating this. Because if you hit the prime button on your pump, it's running it dry and it's this is running dry for a while until it works. Because it clicks, it's real slow. It's just click, 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 back and forth until it gets it. If there's um, diesel already here, you're all set, and I'll show you how to prime it. So we have our fuel line um, temporarily set up. Now we need to mount our heater. Some stuff out of here. Um, so there's a nice little plate that you can see right here. Okay, I think we need to cut out a circular pattern. All right, so if we look under the trailer, we got like a little one foot by one foot-ish space um, that we need to be within. Let's see, so where do we want our heater to go? This is the right side. Something like that, maybe? Real simple. Pretty much away from the wall there. So test hole works. And I'm gonna mark where I want my hole to go. Inspect the underside, see if I like it. Let's take a look here. Ugh. All right. Well, my hole's a little bit off on size, but it's okay. It works. No washers or anything. This wire 
goes to the fuel pump. I'm gonna run through this existing hole. The wire pull it. And this can only go in one way as well, looks like. There we go. Make sure that's at my 15 degrees. All right, uh, now we're gonna hook up the exhaust and the air inlet. The air inlet, you just put that little uh, guy on there, lock it down the tube a little bit. This is a expansion tube, so you can get a little bit more room. Make sure you put the other side on. And uh, same deal with the muffler. Muffler slides on there. One thing that I will note, the muffler needs to be orientated just like this. See this right here in the bottom, that hole? That is a, uh, a drip hole for moisture. So the muffler, instead of being flat like a car, actually goes up like this. And um, the other tip too, this muffler needs to be lower um, than the heater. And it also needs to be the lowest point. So if your heater is, you know, right here, up here, um, you know, you want it lower. You can angle it down. Wouldn't angle it up because it's gonna trap moisture. Level works. You know, or maybe a little, you know, I don't even know if I'd angle it down. I'd probably keep, keep it level like this and just lower than the uh, the heater. All right? So let's get this uh, attached. My hands are freezing. I should be wearing gloves, but I'm not. All right. So. Now, this is a little bit of common sense. So this is your fuel line right here, right? So. This is your air intake. Um, you know, because obviously you don't want your fuel next to the exhaust, which is this guy right here. So let's see. The exhaust. The other thing, too. Uh, I don't recommend putting the exhaust underneath the, the camper because you don't want those fumes coming up. Um, you can have it pointed out the side like this if you want. Uh, that's not a bad idea. So where am I going to put mine? Well, let's first get this mounted and see where I got room to stick it. It just slides on real nice. Alright, so, uh, Again, pretty temporarily. I got my lines kind of zip tied right there. And uh, I want to make sure that it doesn't ever touch the exhaust, the fuel line. So I want to make sure that they uh, kind of run that. Okay, so you can kind of see where I got it going here. Ran that to there. Now I need to trim this line. Alright, using one of the provided uh, hose clamps. Pop that on there. Took it and stretched the pipe out a little bit. filter pump between 15 to 30 degrees no kinks in the line no right angles in the line plugged in run around um, muffler with the drip pointed down it's just gonna hang there for right now until I oh, have a warmer day and then air intake right there all our lines are hooked up all right now we can move on to something more pleasant. All right, so a little pro tip. So new cans come with these safety child lock things. As soon as you buy a new gas can, throw these away. Get on Amazon. You can actually buy a non-child safety lock thing. Um, they're relatively inexpensive. And having a hard nozzle and trying to make a, a bend like I have to, how are you supposed to do that? It's, it's ridiculous, especially with a five gallon can, you just gotta kill yourself. So, this is what the other ones look like, just like your old school generics. 
So I can do this without making a mess. Let's uh, get the diesel off my hands. So when you set this up, one thing to be uh, aware of is where this exhaust is. You don't want it by an open window or anything like that to get back in the camper. I do have this hole here, so I covered it in uh, packing tape uh, so it doesn't backflow into the camper when I'm running it. Well, I got the battery charging and then uh, we'll try it out. Okay, we got her all hooked up. Let's see what this thing looks like. All right, here's my controller. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn the unit on. I think you just do it by holding this button down. Okay. You can see it's doing its warming cycle, it looks like. I think that's heat level three. Let's turn the bad boy up, see what she does. Turn it to six. We kind of get the countdown here to see how long it takes. Right now the heater's priming. It's got a slow amount of wind on the fan, so it's probably warming up right now. This thing says. Okay, you can hear the pump starting to pump. Let's go check that out. Okay, so it's primed. Should start, there it goes. You can see the diesel starting to move it its way up the line there. You can see the fuel traveling, traveling away. Fan's kicking up a little bit. No warmer yet. I think it's just finishing off its warm up cycle. That's the thermostat. Still chilly. Oh, I got an air code E eight. All right, so I just uh, reset the unit by disconnecting it from the battery. So it uh, might be an idea to do that. Um, it's kicking warm air. It feels pretty nice. Oh, loving that. It's so cool. I got heat in my camper. Now I can work in here in a little bit of warmth. Um, 
not going to let this run, so I'm going to turn it off. And I think just to turn it off, you just hit the power button, hold it, off. And then what it's going to do is it's going to run a little while, cool off the, cool off the fan. Oh my god, that feels nice. In here, cooling off. Let's see how long it takes to shut off. Slowly spinning down. Still slowly spinning. It says it's still on. It doesn't give you a countdown or anything. There it goes. Now it's completely off.